But the motion I chose, and uh, I chose this probably back in December or something like that, and, and I thought about it a fair amount because I knew it would be a controversial motion. And uh, in fact, it was even suggested when I chose it uh, by our researcher, well, maybe you better talk to the whip about it. So I talked to the whip and he said, I don't care. Fine. <laughs> and my motion reads, be it resolved that the Legislative Assembly urge the government to solicit public opinion on the creation of a single public secular school board. So I'm looking at a very, a very broad issue of the whole concept that they talked about, secular school boards, not about the Mormonville situation specifically, but certainly they're very closely related. So really my motion is, let's have the debate. Let's discuss this issue. Let's discuss it in public. Let's have some public feedback on this. And as Dave said, the legislators have the option, once they've heard the feedback, to make the decision. You might not like it, but we have the option to make it, and that's how public policy is formed. But the consultation, open, honest debate is very important to public policy. If we have a very closed session and only hear one side of the story, it's not likely to formulate a very good public policy. So I guess my question boils down to a number of things. Why should one faith or cultural group have special privileges in our society? I think we believe in treating everybody equally. So why should one group have special privileges? Second question. We separate religion and politics. So why should we have religion in education? Maybe we should separate religion and education as well. Looking back since Confederation, our cultural mosaic in Canada has changed considerably. It's changing every day, and it's bound to change drastically, particularly here in Alberta, in the next few years as we get back into our uh, economic development in the oil sands and uh, we need to bring in more <coughs> workers, it's going to change considerably. And we've certainly seen a considerable change in the last number of years. So the issue is going to become more and more important in the next number of years. So let's have the debate now so we can be prepared for the future. Diversification of our society is going to get broader and broader from a cultural perspective. Then we should look at the economic perspective. In St. Albert, for instance, in the northeast quadrant, there's not a single school, not a single school north of the Sturgeon River and east of the uh, St. Albert Trail. I should I should qualify that. There is a single school. There's a Lutheran, uh, Lutheran church has a school. But there's not a single public school. The Protestant School Board has been lobbying very hard and they've got a proposal on the, on the minister's desk for a public-private partnership for a school up in North Erin Ridge. The Catholic School Board is looking very hard to get, hard at getting a school up in that region as well. The Francophone School, which is only oh, probably 10 years old, I, I'm not exactly sure. They've outgrown their facilities, they've expanded, they've got uh, nine grades in their school now. Their high school, they've had to use the old portion of the Uville home, which is a uh, long-term care facility, which just got some major renovations in the last number of years. But the basement part, which they don't use anymore, they let the uh, Franklin School use for their high school. Now that's obviously not going to last for very many more years, so they're desperately in need of further space. But as taxpayers, can we afford to have all of these three schools in that sector? I know the Minister of Finance, what his answer will be, not now. 
so it's going to be delayed. And as I said, the Fossil School Board has been lobbying for several years to get this off the ground. Uh, they have a developer that's gung-ho to, uh, to build the school and operate as a public-private partnership, but they cannot get the go-ahead from Treasury Board. But looking at it from another economic perspective, why can we not share our facilities, our school facilities, expensive uh, vocational programs, expensive gymnasiums that sit idle half the time, sports fields, why can they not be shared? And I know there was a proposal in North Edmonton a number of years ago for the uh, uh, Edmonton public and the Edmonton Catholic to build a joint school and have separate wings with some of the common facilities in the center. Made a lot of sense to me, but it was a no-go. Similarly, in St. Albert, uh, probably 15, 20 years ago, there was concern about the bus and transportation it gets to be very, very expensive. Three years ago, when I was uh, campaigning up in Aaron Ridge, I was amazed. Three o'clock in the afternoon, school buses go in every direction. Taking kids here, taking kids there. Pay. It's amazing. Why can we all uh, share our transportation facilities? And unfortunately, they came that close to solving the problem with joint partnership between the, uh, the uh, Catholic School Board and the Protestant School Board. The Frankfurt didn't exist at that time. Uh, and the City of St. Albert to come up with a joint transportation facility using some of the city transportation uh, network as well. But at the last minute, one of the boards said, no, we cannot change our school program in the fell apart. So we're getting more and more pressure on our tax dollars to provide school and other facilities. And we need to start looking at ways we can compromise and probably we can provide a better education for our students by working jointly as well. So I think these are just a number of the reasons that I sort of got involved in, in the situation. But I will go back with a little anecdote, my first inkling of this problem. We moved up from Red Deer uh, in 1972, and we looked all over Edmonton and all over Sherwood Park, and we just happened to come to St. Albert and go, hey, this is a pretty nice community, and <coughs> my wife had a classmate there, and we thought, hey, we should maybe look here. And that was 1972, and I can't remember exactly when the uh, Protestant separate school board in St. Albert, the Protestant school is a separate school board, and the Catholic is the public board, similar to Morrisville, except you don't have a Protestant board. And all those rumors were going, oh my God, you're moving to Little Ireland, all the fighting between Protestants and the Catholics. <laughs> Anyways, we moved in in September of 72, and uh, <coughs> we're a little desperate to get to my middle son in kindergarten. He was in kindergarten age. Uh, my oldest son was in probably grade two, I guess, at the time. And so there was only one option, and that was uh, the Catholic uh, Church on the Catholic <coughs> kindergarten. So we, my friend, my son Paul, had a little friend just two doors down that he got acquainted with, uh, Kevin. And uh, they climbed on the bus and went out to kindergarten. Well, it was great. They were great friends. They got along really well all year long. And next September came along and they go to the bus. And Kevin gets on one bus and Paul gets on another bus. Paul comes home and says to Mom, Mom, what's a Catholic? And this kid just lived two doors down and they just drifted apart. It was a shame. Uh, uh, Dave talked about the fragmentation of the community. And that was very evident in, in what happened in our own family, uh, in our own neighborhood, because those two kids hardly ever got together after that. So I think it's a situation that we need to discuss. And I want to discuss it in a broader perspective, because I think it's uh, an issue that is going to concern us in the, in the years to come, and we need to talk about it. And I think that's important. And I had a discussion with a few people when I, when I should go back and uh, I wrote my article in the St. Albert Gazette in April. Uh, 
the St. Albert Gazette uh, uh, asked me as soon as I got elected uh, if I would write an article uh, uh, once a month in the Gazette. So the second, second <coughs> month is my turn. Actually, I had started on this article back in March, and I, I couldn't quite get my head around it. I wasn't totally happy with it, but in April I, I submitted it. And just prior to that, I happened to talk to uh, some friends. We have a little wine group that got together. And incidentally, in this wine group, most of the families sent their kids to Catholic school. And in the conversation, some would say, well, God, if you want to tackle that, you're crazy. It's going to be very controversial. And that's one of the problems I see with our society. We're so politically correct these days. We don't want to rock the boat. But certainly, I feel, as a, a politician, that we have a responsibility to speak out on these issues and take a chance. We might get a public slaying or a flogging on it, but I think we have an obligation to raise these issues and get some public discussion. And I, I know, and I think they've alluded to it uh, as well, we very often are very reluctant to tackle these issues. It's pretty easy to just, well, let's not talk about it, it'll go away. But it's not going to go away. It's just going to fester and fester until it gets worse. So let's talk about it. And that's basically my position. I think we need to discuss this issue and other issues, of course, uh, in the public forum and get some opinion and make decisions. That's what we're paid for. <laughs> <laughs>